water, usually at the head of a pool or a drop-off, where it's possible to get close to the fish without spooking it. Keeping the line off the water helps to get the nymph down quickly and help to give control in fast water. The sheer size and power of these fish had to be seen to be believed. This was definitely a major difference between New Zealand and Holland. We learned a great deal about playing big river fish and naively thinking that having hooked up, the difficult part was over. Wrong. It varied depending on whether we'd hooked a rainbow or a brown. Rainbows tend to subject you to a searing first run. Right, make some of that material off your fast. <laughs> Browns, on the other hand, tend to be more cunning, often running downstream, and if there was a submerged tree or rock, would try to get under it. It's a case of sprinting downstream to get below the fish whilst maintaining pressure throughout. We use maximum side strain when appropriate by dropping the rod low, so the fish now has to fight both the current and the rod. At least that's the theory. This really did help, and we landed a lot more fish as a result. The other really important point when playing these fish is to minimise the drag effect of the water flow by holding the rod high, by lifting the arms high. It keeps the fly line out of the water, this also dramatically improved our landing rate. Despite the trout caught, we only occasionally saw a bit of backing, as we usually followed the fish downstream. 50 yards of backing was ample, and any fish that gets 30 yards of fly line and 50 yards of backing out on a fast stream is probably history anyway. We played the fish hard, the quicker they were landed, the better shape they would be in when released. Using the correct technique, it was often possible to land fish very quickly. Gorgeous fish. Here we go, not bad. <laughs> when landing and photographing fish, we kept them in the water as much as possible and released them early. If the fish doesn't swim away immediately, it needs to be supported until it is ready to go. It often helps to move the fish backward and forward to get oxygen through its gills to accelerate recovery. This was to be one special day. Donok took first a magnificent brown of seven pounds. From here the day just got better and better. It was obvious that we were experiencing something you only dream about. Surface takes can be spectacular. Note how the fish breaks surface with its nose to inhale the fly. Well done, there you go. That's a It was agreed that this was the best day's fly fishing we had had in our entire lives and it was only the second day in New Zealand. The sheer quality of the experience would be hard to beat. Great, really hard. We often fished with a small pheasant tail nymph, PTN, set some nine inches below the drive. This technique took about 25% of the fish during the day. If you're restricted to just one nymph, then this should be it. 
the evening meal was more of a celebratory drink. We just could not stop talking about the day we just had. Frankly, we still haven't. What breathtaking scenery during our one and a half hour drive in the trusty 4x4 to Mount Cook. It dominates the skyline, standing at 12,349 feet. We saw one other vehicle throughout the whole journey. Our horse back in Twizel, Vlad the Russian, a black sable hunter from Siberia in a previous life, had decided to join us. He wasn't a fly fisherman and used a spinning rod. Having arrived at our destination, we decided that the best game plan would be to walk two and a half to three miles downstream and then to fish back up to the vehicles. It was a truly memorable occasion, fishing one of the legendary streams at the foot of this magnificent mountain. It was a gorgeous day, not a cloud in the sky. The landscape was magnificent, but at the same time, it was also a little eerie. What a privilege to be casting a fly in these surroundings. To catch a fish would be a bonus. Very big fish could be seen from selected vantage points. They proved very elusive and we didn't catch many, but when we did, they were absolutely awesome. Once again, the power of these fish is evident. Just as you think it's all over, off he goes again. This fish would just not give up. He topped the scales at five and a half pounds. Note the pressure Don is exerting on this fish. In real time, it took just two minutes, 10 seconds to land it. Once hooked, it was relatively straightforward to land these fish as there were few obstacles for them to use to avoid capture. It was largely a matter of just hanging on and following wherever the fish decided to go. Well, there's more than one way of landing a fish. We came across a number of eels during the trip, but this was by far the biggest. It was estimated at around 60 pounds by the guide. It wasn't too bothered by our presence, that's for sure. He obviously thought he was at the top of the food chain. <laughs>